I'm Walt Golett. I'm a marine scientist. All science starts with a question, and my questions all involve a pretty big fish called a bluefin tuna. What is their future? Will there be more of them or fewer of them? And where in the world are they coming from? I can answer all of these questions by studying a few small bones inside of the tuna's head. Getting those bones is very interesting. Our biggest challenge is actually trying to acquire samples from those fish. And one of the best parts of my job is being able to work with both the commercial and the recreational fishermen along the east coast of the United States and coordinate the um, sampling of these fish. I would say we probably have upwards of a thousand or more fishermen who are helping us collect these samples. So we use a structure called an otolith to learn more about the population of bluefin. And an otolith is really a crystal. There's six of them or three sets of them that are in the inner ear of the fish. And where we're trying to go is right here at the base of the skull. There's a little pocket or a little capsule in there. And hidden in the base of that is where the otoliths are kept. There's a small membrane. And if you can grab a hold of that membrane, you just nice and easy can pull out the otolith. We can use the otoliths to try to determine where fish are coming from or where fish were spawned. And we can do that utilizing chemical signatures which are locked into the otolith. You can almost think of the otolith like a little computer hard drive which stores information. And that information is unique depending on where the fish was born. Bluefin are a highly migratory species. They're traveling from Florida to Norway, from the Mediterranean Sea, all the way over to the Gulf of Mexico and the Gulf of Maine and back again. So the unique thing about otoliths is from the time a fish is spawned, so when it's just a very, very tiny larval fish, to the time that it dies, the otolith accumulates material. Okay, it's, you can kind of think of it as layers being added. And it's very similar to when you look at the stump of a tree and you see the rings, the concentric rings. Once we extract the otoliths from the tuna themselves, we embed them in this epoxy resin, and then we section them with a, a low-speed diamond saw, which cuts a very nice, thin section of the otolith. We then take that, put it underneath a microscope, shine a light through it, and when we do that process, it allows us to see individual rings. Some otoliths, when we section them, when we look at them under the light, are very clear, and we can have a very good confidence of what the age of the fish is. And then in other cases, we can look at another otolith, and the otolith is very fuzzy. It's very unclear. You can't really count the lines as confidently as you could, say, in the first one where it's really clear. And so reading otoliths, it's a little bit of an art. Aging is very important for determining when a fish is capable of spawning. We don't want to kill fish prior to them having the opportunity to reproduce because if we do, it's kind of like a net loss. You're, you're losing that fish and all of the little fish that it could have produced before it had a chance to. So knowing the age allows us to figure out when we should start catching them. So it kind of defines how long a fish should be before you keep it. Recently, we've noticed that a lot of the fish in the Gulf of Maine, particularly in the early part of the season, are much bigger than we have seen historically. Recently, we've had fish 120, 125 inches, so that's a little bit over 10 feet long. And then along with our colleagues, we've also found some very old fish in the Gulf of Maine in excess of 30 years. I got interested in marine science because my father actually worked on a charter boat when I was a little kid. So I was always down at the docks and I was one of those kids that got exposed to seeing all the sharks and swordfish and big tunas and fish that were coming in on all the different boats. And as a kid, I mean, what's better than going down and seeing a 10 foot long shark? Seeing bluefin on the dock versus in the water is a completely different thing. The fish are just beautiful in the water. Not only are they big and they're great to see, but when they're in the water in general, they light up. They literally have these beautiful blue streaks that will, will brighten up when they're swimming next to the boat. They have beautiful yellow finlets that reflect light off of them when they're at the surface. 
We share a lot of our research with not only other scientists, but we share it with um, school children. And it's a really exciting thing for me to do. So one of the neat things inside the eye is the actual lens. That's cool. That's a marvel. One of the great things about science, whether you're talking fishery science or science in general, is science is the process of discovery. And with respect to fisheries, it's the process by maintaining sustainability. We try to put all the pieces together to make sure that bluefin are around now and into the future.